In the last video when we looked around the NHL, Grandmaster116 says, where's Kokaniemi? Well, he's still in the Montreal Canadiens organization, 22 years old, 82 overall, medium elite. I'm not sure why he wasn't in their lineup. I'll go check that for you. Yeah, so for some reason he's scratched in Montreal, even though he's 82 overall. In come the comments, trade for Kokaniemi, trade for Kokaniemi. Why are they playing Brandon Sutter ahead of Kokaniemi? I gotta start this video, I can't be talking about the Montreal Canadiens. We gotta worry about Ottawa, baby. Let's go. You have the German Shepherd in Glen Sumal, and then you have the St. Bernard in Bernard Docker. The Hound Dog slash the Wolf Pack pairing. You love to see it. That is an incredible nickname, the Ninja Hurdle. High five to you, my friend. What's going on? And welcome back to your Ottawa Senators for Franchise Mode. A few days after GM Week, I kind of let it settle. I took a few days and I let everyone catch up on GM Week because obviously I don't expect you guys to watch every single day, but for the majority of you, you actually did, so that's awesome. So if you're all caught up if you're not go ahead and stop the video right here go watch the ones that you missed because our team is now a legitimate contender in the NHL but here we are a couple days after GM week and I do like that nickname the Wolfpack pairing with Glenn Sumal and Jacob St. Bernard Docker that's awesome all right if we can keep that trend going with the dogs and the wolves, the wolf pack, that's kind of cool. But anyways, here we are. A lot of people are saying that Taylor Radish is a beast on the first line. Now, 22 points in 39 games. He's a plus seven. I'm a little bit concerned that Alex Nylander isn't really playing that great. He's only got two goals, and I know he's more of a playmaker. 24 points in 39 games isn't bad. I would like for him to just start spicing it up a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and change up the power play, all that kind of stuff. But for this video, I think we're probably going to get the rest of the regular season done, do a little recap, and then in the next episode, we're going to head into the playoffs, baby. A place where the Ottawa Senators have never been under GMX Tech, under this whole new regime here in Ottawa. The Dorito Dome, the new management, the snacks for everyone. It's a new wave here in Ottawa, and you love to see it. So Nick Suzuki was that huge addition last episode. Now, I think he's only played like seven games, if I recall correctly, but he does have like four or five points. So that's awesome. Him. This guy was kind of gifted to us from Vegas. Thanks very much. Uh, but the team is pretty much ready to go. I don't think I'm going to make too many changes aside from our power play, which I'll do right now, and then I'll see you guys in a second. Now, in the last video, I was looking around for Patrice Bergeron. Apparently, he retired after the 2021-2022 season. Paul let me know, episode number 16, he was still a member of the Boston Bruins. Almost 1,300 games played, over 400 goals, and just under 1,000 points. So I was looking looking around where did he go I forgot he retired a few episodes ago so that's my bad I'm sure everyone in the comments is like dude he retired a few episodes ago what are you doing it was just kind of weird to see the Bruins without Patrice Bergeron so I didn't really make the connection now last episode we ended off with three L's in a row which is never good so you got the Capitals the Toronto Maple Leafs and then the Montreal Canadiens we're gonna go ahead and we're going to get these three games done probably do a couple of slow sim games here and there now I've been working on the scouts off camera uh, a first for Brian Russ in a second. See you later, Chicago. Not happening. And I have a comment here to bring up uh, after we go ahead and get all these scouts ready to go. Just a tip. When scouting prospects, the most important thing to do to scout in a player is to scout potential in comparison. Just go by region. I've already read the comment and I've already pre-done this. I just want to let you guys know what I've been doing. He basically says the best way is for potential and comparison. That way you can get later steals in the draft. I got two franchise players in one draft by doing this. So I hope I can even get half that luck. So after we go ahead and, uh, oh, no longer have room, so maybe I signed too many. Sorry, my bad, boys, my bad. Uh, we'll go ahead and get these two games done. Hopefully we can continue the wins. Oh, 7-4 against Toronto. They have a really shitty record, 15-22-2. Up against the Habs. Let's get back into the winning ways. Hockey Night in Canada. Maybe for you guys over in the States or if you're over in Europe, you don't know how big of a deal Hockey Night in Canada is. It is the biggest deal. It's the biggest day of the week for hockey fans. We need to show up here and beat the Montreal. Montreal Canadiens. Everyone's watching. It's a national broadcast. Let's go. First period up against Jesperi Kokaniemi, who's scratched on the bench. 3 nothing in a line. We got Evgeny Malkin, Johnny Tyconic, and Anthony Mantha. We could probably chase Carey Price here. 16-4 to are the shots. Don Cherry's loving it in Coach's Corner. Yeah, that Evgeny Malkin, one of the Russians I like. Anthony Mantha, good kid. And that Johnny Tyconic. He'll never pronounce that name right, I guarantee it. Going into 
into the second period. Still 3 nothing. headed into the third, and we, oh my god, we blow the doors open. 6 to nothing. Three goals in a line once again. Two from the left and one from the far right. Mantha, Andreas Janssen, the legend, the waiver legend, and then Colin White. They keep Carey Price in there for all six. Ouch, that one hurts. So you can see we got a decent amount of information. I'm sorry if you can hear the rain outside my house right now. I don't know if my microphone is catching it, but it is like a crazy storm out here. So hopefully I don't lose power once again and the whole franchise mode goes to shit. But I just sent a ton of scouts out. So we're definitely gonna have a, uh, a deeper understanding of this draft. Cause the last couple years, we basically just focused on the top five, but I definitely wanna go deeper in the draft this year. So we got a lot of scouts out here. We're good we are ready to go let's go ahead and get some more simulation done i don't know if we're gonna get the entire year done who knows actually maybe wondering if we have any teams that we've made any big deals with obviously the san jose sharks we can always catch up with eric carlson but 28 12 and 2 we're a good team and i'm pretty sure we're going to be a playoff team i mean barring a ridiculous collapse i think we should be good another shutout that's back to back baby that's matt murray or it could be philip gustafson um so there's two shutouts in a row and then we come back with two losses all right let's go to 30 and 14 here i don't want to go 29 and 15. god damn avery fitzmorris we're looking for our 30th win of the year and we're looking to give the San Jose Sharks their 20th loss of the year. Hopefully we can pull it off here. I'd love to get number 30 against Eric Carlson, period number one. It's one nothing, and it's Evgeny Malkin. There you go. The shots are even at eight, period number two, still one nothing. This could be an overtime game we could maybe hop into. Let's have a look here. 23 to 17 are the shots. Big old power play. Come on, you gotta capitalize on those. We're out shooting them like crazy. We should have this one in the bag here. Come on, if we just play good defensive hockey for six and a half more minutes. Uh, they're getting a few more shots. They're pressing late, but it's all good, baby, because we have two-time Stanley Cup champion Matt Murray between the pipes, and the only goal of the hockey game goes to three-time Stanley Cup champion Evgeny Malkin. Sorry, it wasn't even it wasn't even Matt Murray. It was Philip Gustafsson who made 29 stops. Atta boy. I don't think he's seen much ice this year, but he seems to get like a shutout like every other game. That's awesome. I really want to see a game against the Vegas Golden Knights if we have one coming up. I know we're going to slow sim the game against Carolina. Say what's up to Grand Pierre. Uh, any other games against Vegas? No other games against Vegas. I guess obviously we wouldn't really play each other that much. I mean, in Seattle, we played Vegas every other game, it kind of seemed like, but no real important games coming up. Obviously, games are important, but nothing, no real big trading partners. So we'll go say what's up to Grand Pierre in a little over a month. We got Connor McDavid here, and then we got like over a week and a half off. So Edmonton's pretty good. That's got to be a victory. Two nothing loss. Come on, boys. Kind of a weird uh, start here. We got Max Pacioretty for a first. Okay, so if this was a few years ago, and if we were looking for Max Pacioretty, absolutely. His morale's probably way down. Yeah, I don't know why they're hanging on to him. 34 years old. He's had two really bad years, and they're still hanging on to him. They just want way too much for him. Sorry, Montreal. I can't do it. I'm just really confused as to why they're not playing Kokaniemi. And he has a ton of trade value. They're just not playing him. It's just so bizarre. Montreal, what are you, what's going on, guys? What are you? What's the deal here? You have you have a you have a top three pick and you're screwing him over. What are you doing? Someone's gonna trade for Kokaniemi, man. I hope he gets moved. It makes no sense for us to trade for Kokaniemi. I mean, obviously there's going to be a ton of Montreal fans in the comments. Save Kokaniemi, save Kokaniemi. I'm not going to trade for Kokaniemi. It makes no sense for our team. I'm just going to stay away from that. Obviously, we just got Nick Suzuki, which was huge. I think we have to pay a little bit more for Kokaniemi. A first for Ryan Spooner. No, thank you. Uh, okay, a win and then a loss. That seems to be our trend here. A big win and then two losses, or a loss and then two wins. Let's go on a three or four game streak here, boys. That's back-to-back -back losses against the Jets and the Preds. We've got a couple of original six matchups here. Two firsts for Brett Pesci and Victor Rask. I'm not even going to look at this. Come on, Chicago, that's got to be an easy game. Their record was terrible. Oh my god, boys, what's going on here? What is the deal? 31-20-2. Hold on. 
Let's just calm down. Another loss. Okay, okay. Maybe let's change something up here. Something's got to give. We've dropped to second in our division, but we're tied with the Detroit Red Wings for third. And the Bruins are creeping right up. So we got to really change something up here. Something's got to give. All right, so I moved Nylander back up to the first line. I kept everything else pretty much the exact same. I noticed Taylor Radish was playing pretty good, but I don't want to overplay him. Plus, he was playing on his opposite wing. He's really young, so I don't want to kind of ruin that. I mean, kind of same thing with Alex Nylander. He's actually the exact same age, so pretty much contradicted myself there. But I think uh, putting Colin White with a guy who can really feed the puck, like Alex Nylander, I think this line, I want to keep the NWA line together or the A&W line, whatever you want to call it. We're going to make that change. I also changed up the power play a little bit, so hopefully we can get back into the winning ways here up against the Minnesota Wild and another 2-1 loss. What's with the lack of goal scoring right now, guys? What's going on here? We've scored what? We've got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We scored nine goals in our last three, four, five, six games. That is not good enough. Absolutely not. Come on, guys. Step it up here. Big win against the Caps. This has got to be a big win against Ovi. There you go. 4-3. That's perfect. Now we're up against the Carolina Hurricanes, a team that we've beat multiple times before. They got Grand Pierre on the fourth line. What are you doing? Let's go ahead here. Start off simulation strong. We're down by one. Sebastian Ajo going into the second. Jacob St. Bernard Docker gets us on the score sheet. Sebastian Ajo gets his second. And again, we only score one goal. What the hell is going on? All right, enough. Let's all calm down here. Let's get back into the winning ways. A first for Adrian Kempe. Absolutely not. Uh, up against Pittsburgh. They don't have Geno. I know Crosby's a lot older, and that's a big victory, 6-1. to one. I know that their record was really, really bad. Same with Toronto. This has got to be an easy dub here. I'm not interested in trading a first for a middle winger. No thank you. Come on, you're going to lose to Toronto 3-2? to two? I mean, Pittsburgh's terrible. That's got to be an easy win, but come on. We're going to go right up to the trade deadline here. Hopefully, we can get a few dubs along the way up against the Wings. Another loss. Unbelievable. So we're going to go up to the trade deadline. Another loss. Hopefully, oh God, we've dropped a lot. 33-25-3. That is not acceptable. Another loss. What is going on? We're probably on the outside looking in right now. What's going on here? Yeah, we're 69 points. Buffalo just passed us. What an incredible collapse. Holy crap. Okay, so there was one point in time where we were miles ahead of everyone else. Miles. And now... I don't know what's going on. So Brady Kachuk seems to be lighting it up on the third line. We're going to go ahead and do this. Not punishing Nick Suzuki. I'm just trying to get some scoring going here. Radish, we're going to... I mean, how is Alex Nylander doing? He hasn't really done anything. So we're going to put you there. Nylander, White, Mantha are breaking up that line. We're going to go Nylander, Gino, and then Brady Kachuk. That's Gino doing. He's got 24 goals. He's got almost 50 points. 43 and 62. That's not bad. Is it our bottoms? Is it our bottom six? Like they seem to be doing okay. Logan Brown's doing totally fine. Andreas Janssen's doing fine. They're all plus players, except for except for the shoe. He's a minus three. Um, same with Brett Ritchie. He's got ten Genos though. It's not our defense, no way. Our defense is playing great. Seth Jones has got 50 points almost. Uh, Thomas Shabbat's doing pretty good, but I don't know what it is. Is it our goaltending? There's no way. Philip Gustafson's, yeah, obviously he's the backup, but Matt Murray, he's got, what is he looking like here? 25 and 19. So, I mean, it's okay. Um, it started off really, really hot, and then we kind of trailed off. I don't know what the deal is here. So up against Columbus, and they are obviously not in our division. They are, I know they're really good. Columbus has 68 points, so we have one more point than them. So even though they're not in our division, they are in our conference, and we need to win as many games as possible. We're 2-7-1 in our last 10. We cannot let this slip away like this. This could be one of the this could be one of the biggest collapses I've ever seen. I believe in the boys though. Come on, let's go up against Columbus. They're a powerhouse. Pierre-Luc Dubois. Okay. Period number two. Boys, what is going on right now? Four to one. Anthony Mantha. What is the deal with our team? Seriously. I skipped right over the trade deadline. I'm not interested in making any moves because I know we can win games. I know we're a good enough team. 
So let's have a look around the NHL. Let's see what's going on and then uh, regarding trades, and then we'll see if we can just get back into the swing of things. We have like under 20 games left, so we need to win a lot of them. Uh, Jacob Verona goes from Washington to the Boston Bruins. For John Moore and Dylan DeMello, that's kind of funny. Uh, Brandon Manning, a couple of small trades. Uh, the Bruins were in on a lot of trades, actually. So they got, they traded away Anders, wait, hold on. Boston acquired a third and a bunch of prospects for Anders Bork and a third. And then Boston acquired, and then they reacquired Anders Bork two days later from San Jose. What? <laughs> so, they, so they originally sent him to San Jose. Two days later, they're like, yeah, we don't really like you. They made, they redid the trade. That's so weird. Edmonton gets Tory Krug. Damn. Minnesota acquires GM mode legend Stephen No Goal Santini for Connor Sheary. And then Montreal gets a first and a prospect for Jake Gensel. So now with Jake Gensel gone, does that mean Jesperi Kokaniemi finally cracks the NHL roster? That's so weird. Let's see if he's on the squad. Finally, he makes the NHL team, but he's down to a 79 now. What are you doing, Montreal? I mean, I guess they made the right move. They got a first for a guy that was kind of too good for the third line, but yeah, that was weird. But we really need to start winning some hockey games. I've moved Brady Kachuk up. He's got 20 goals this year. I need some goal scoring, guys. I need to see some pucks in the back of the net. Too many times we've lost 4-1, to 3-1, to 3 nothing. Let's get some Ws going. There's a 3-1 win. Let's keep it going. Okay, we got an overtime loss. I guess I'll take the pity point. Let's go here up against Avery Fitzmorris and the Vancouver Canucks. We don't play these guys very often, but whenever we do, we got to slow sim it. Let's go 0-0 zero, zero after one. Going into the second. All right, 1-1. One, one. Avery Fitzmorris and Colin White. All right, this could be a tight one here. Come on, guys. Let's get one before the 10-minute mark. Let's get it right away. Put the pressure on. 15 to 25 are the shots. We're being outshot like crazy. Uh, I believe we have Matt Murray between the pipes, and Colin White gets his second of the night. Oh, my God. There you go. And Nick Ritchie. There you go. That's what I'm talking about. Another power play. Let's get it going. Let's get the goal scoring going. We need to find our goal scoring touch. Jonathan Deline scores with a minute left, but reports are coming out that Colin White is suffering from a sore back from carrying the team that's a big big win there and you can thank your first line center Colin White basically every single game is a must win but we got to look out for some teams like Buffalo Florida Tampa Bay Detroit and the Bruins are right on our tail they have 70 points and we have what 74 I think I just saw yeah so we're only four points ahead of them now how many games do we have against these teams we have a game against the Bruins so that's a definite must win the Florida Panthers as well Buffalo Tampa Buffalo Tampa Tampa Buffalo so we got a lot of games against a lot of teams that we need to win at this stage in the game like I said every game is a must win even if it's a Western Conference opponent there you go pulling it out in the shootout and another win against the St. Louis Blues that's good another win the boys are rolling right now up against New Jersey that's what I'm talking about boys Oh, there you go. We'll check out all that stuff afterwards. I'm worried about winning hockey games right now. Hockey. I want to win a bunch of hockey games. Uh, so we got up against Florida here. Let's get the Rangers and the Dallas Stars done. Come on. Oh, okay, we lost against both those teams. We did get a shootout. We did get a shootout loss. So we did get the pity point. Now, I know Florida was just ahead of us, but we did win four straight. So let's see where we're at. Okay, so with this game, we could be tied with Buffalo for fourth. Okay, this could get interesting. The Bruins, I think they're too far gone. Right now we're tied with a wild card spot with the Florida Panthers, so this is a must win. Um, we're 6-2-2 two two in our last 10, so we've turned it around, and the Florida Panthers are 5-4-1. So they're sliding, and we're hot right now. So let's please win this game. In the Dorito Dome, Ottawa, Canada welcomes the Florida Panthers. Alex Barkov versus Colin White. Let's go, period number one. Okay, it's 0-0. Zero, zero. We're being outshot but it's all good period number two come on boys okay we're down by one Glenn Sumal what's up buddy the dog Jared McCann Vancouver Canucks legend and first overall pick Emilio Howe come on boys we need to win this hockey game it is a must don't even think about potentially not winning this hockey game only thing on your mind should be winning. W-I-N. Come on, 20 shots. Boys, no, 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 not like this. This is a must win. We talked about this. 
another game where we only get on the score sheet once. That is completely unacceptable. With all the firepower that we have, oh my god. Okay, that hurts. That really, really, really hurts. You have to win this game against the Bruins too. They look like they're out of it, but they can still squeak in. So we do have an easy win against Pittsburgh. I mean, I say that now, an easy win, but anything can happen. And please win. There you go, 6-4. to four. And another big win against the Pittsburgh Penguins. So now are we tied with Buffalo or did that Florida game really screw us? So we're still tied with Florida, 87 points. Yeah, the Bruins are definitely out of it. So we're fighting the Florida Panthers here. And again, with this win, we can be tied with the Buffalo Sabres. So this is an extremely tight race. Going through that last month, going through uh, February really killed us. That was a lot of losses. That really did not help our case whatsoever. So these next two games are absolute must wins. I'm not gonna slow sim this one because I feel like that might jinx us. Well, didn't actually matter. We lost 5-1 to one against the Buffalo Sabres. Now it's so sim this one against Tampa. This is very tight. This is a very tight race. That last month really was not very kind to us. First period, it's 1-1. Gino Malkin and Kucherov, the Russians are out to play. Period number two. Okay, going into the third. Is it tied? It's tied. We're going into overtime here. Colin White and Tyler Johnson. If it goes to a shootout, we'll go ahead and, and intervene. But it doesn't go to a shootout. We get the pity point. Another L. Oh my god, this is bad. This is so bad. Okay, so we got Washington, Philly, Colorado, Buffalo, Tampa Bay. All right, so five games left, and we need to win them all. Looks like Florida lost as well their last game, and we got that pity point, so that brings us to 88 points. So we're going to be very closely watching this here. Uh, 88 to 87 still, so let's go up against the Washington Capitals. Again, another game where you have to win. I sound like a broken record. Come on, boys. Colin White, 32 goals on the year. Let's plot a couple tonight. There you go. He gets one, and that's a big victory. We now have 90 points. 90. They have 89, so they just won their game as well. A back-to-back. -back. The boys are tired, and that's a huge loss. Huge loss. Okay, so we need every team to beat Florida. Every team to beat Florida, please. Up against the Avs. Come on, boys. You can do this. There's a big win. That's 92 points. Detroit, out of nowhere. They're now tied with us, and they have the wild card spot. So, holy crap, this is tight. We have two games left, and we have to win them. I mean, and Detroit has to lose, depending on how many how many games. So we both have two games left. Basically, there's no excuse for losing. We have to win both of these games and Detroit has to lose both of theirs. So I pray to the hockey gods, whoever's out there, whoever it is, the hockey god, Gordie Howe, whoever's up there, come on. Be nice to Ottawa here. Be nice to Ottawa. Let's go up against Buffalo. If we lose this game, it's safe to say our season's over. So a must win is an understatement. We're going times eight the entire time. And Taylor Radish, baby, let's go. First shot of the game on starting goalie Carter Hutton. All right, all right, come on, kill that off. Kill that off, there you go. So far, Radish has the only Geno of the game. It's a big one. Started the game off right on the right foot. And Logan Brown, third line center. There you go, that's two. That's two against Buffalo, but they got a lot of firepower. That guy's like Jack Hughes, and doesn't matter, baby. Anthony Mantha makes it three, nothing on Carter Hutton. Uh, they got a lot of... They got a lot of weapons though, so you can't sleep yet. They got guys like Jeff Skinner, and because Ottawa, Jeff Skinner's probably gonna score on us here. 23-17 are the shots. All right, we can, uh, ooh, Casey Middlestat. Ooh, we started Philip Gustafson. Oh boy, okay, so we started both our backups. I think their starting goalie is, oh no, Capo Caco. I think their starting goalie is actually um, Devin Dubnik. So we both started our backup in an extremely important game. I don't know what's going on there. Our assistant coaches must know something we don't. We're out shooting them like crazy. We have the one goal lead. Capo Caco gets them within one. But with three minutes left, Taylor Radish with his second of the game. Does this guy deserve the L word? Does he? Do we get to throw that out quite yet? That is a big win. That's a huge win. Massive. Oh, my God. He could get the let. Oh, no, I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to say it yet because we have a game against his former team in the Tampa Bay Lightning where he could solidify himself as a le... Oh, I'm not going to say it. not going to say it. So Detroit won their game as well. Oh, my God. I mean, you talk about down to the wire. This is literally down to the wire. So I think I'm completely wrong, and you guys can let me know in the comments. 
if you're tied, so if we were tied with wins right now, if they if Detroit had 44 wins as well, that would mean that uh, we would go down to goals four, I believe, and then that would determine who gets the wild card spot. I believe. Now I could be completely wrong. You guys can let me know, but I think that's how it works. I think it goes by most wins. Then if you're tied with wins, obviously you go down to goals four, so on and so forth. I assume it just keeps on going until one team has the advantage. But that was a huge win, a massive win. So basically we have to win this game and we're in the Stanley Cup playoffs. I'm pretty sure because we're currently in a wild card spot, but Detroit also has a game tonight as well. So if we lose this and Detroit wins, that means we're tied in wins, but we also have the exact same amount of points. So if we lose this one and Detroit wins, we have the exact same amount of wins. I don't know how it's going to work. Let's get out of this one with a big W. Please going into the first and Tyler Johnson scores against us a few weeks ago and he scores again. Going into the second. Ooh, lots of goals. Three to one. This is not good. Seattle Storm Bear legend, Ryan Paling. No, 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 no. This is not good. Not good. Oh, my God. This is bad. This is B-A-D. Bad, 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 bad. We need Taylor Radish here big time. I need someone. Colin White, there you go. Come on, boys. We're going times four here. We need as much time as we could possibly get. Colin White with a big goal. Oh, my God. Still carrying the team on his back. Vasilevsky stopping everything in the third period. Pull the goalie right now. Pull him with six minutes left. Patrick Waugh style. I don't care what it takes. If we lose this game and we don't make it into the playoffs, I'm going to be so upset. Or we basically have to hope that Detroit loses. Oh, my God. Of course. Of course. Of freaking course. Bobby Ryan scores. Get out of here. That is such an Ottawa thing to happen. Okay, now did we make the playoffs? The answer is no. What a collapse. Holy shit, what a monumental collapse for the Ottawa Senators. Wow. So if we would have won that game, if we would have scored that one goal extra in the third period to tie it up, and then we would have eventually won the game, we would have leapfrogged Florida, because we would have had obviously 96 points. So they would have been out. But since we lost that one game, the one game we lost. I have never seen a playoff matchup that close. That is insane. We missed the playoffs by one point. One point. Uno. O-N-E. J-U-A-N. One. And I look back to this game against Florida. The 2-1 loss. That game, if we would have won that game, boom. Playoffs. Done. Easy. But we lost that one. And that really screwed us. Even here. So we had three games this month against Florida. And we lost them all. One in regulation. One in overtime. And another 2-1 loss. So we can really... We can have some serious beef with the Florida Panthers here. Oh god. What a shitty way to go out. I am shocked. That sucks. <laughs> that is literally the most brutal way. Oh my god, okay. Well, we're going to go ahead and have a look at the season standings. Holy crap, what a shitty way to lose. That is brutal. So, let's go here with our annual prediction. I'm going to go with the Vancouver Canucks and the Florida Panthers. You know what? I'm not a sore loser. I'm upset that we lost, but I wish the best for Florida. Hopefully Florida goes on and wins the Stanley Cup. That's my pick. I'm sticking to it. Gotta respect your opponents. They won fair and square, but I just can't believe it. One point. I've never seen it that close. Holy crap, that sucks. So it looks like with a record of 39 and 24 with 89 points, our AHL team is gonna be out of the playoffs as well. They would be a playoff team in literally every other division, but since our division is so stacked, Utica, Rochester, Syracuse, Toronto, Bingington, were screwed. So our AHL team gets screwed out of the postseason as well. Oh man, I thought we got rid of the Ottawa curse. Not this year though, maybe next year. The Washington Capitals are your Stanley Cup champions. They go from having no cups to having two within 10 years. So congrats to Washington. Ovi gets another ring and the Devils won in the AHL. So let's do an entire season wrap up. I'm talking look at the playoff tree, look at the upcoming players, look at the stats, look at all that good stuff. So first things first, we are going to have a look at the stats. I'm upset. I am legitimately concerned, upset. I don't know what to feel right now. Um, in our team, Colin White, 75 points. That's awesome. Another great year from our first line center that a lot of people didn't think he 
was going to be a first-line center, but he has defied all odds. What a couple of years here for Colin White. 26 years old, and he is a beast. 38 tucks on the year. Anthony Mantha, 24 goals, 41 points. For a total of 65 points, that is a pretty decent amount more than last year. Uh, he seems to be like a 25-goal guy, which is awesome. Uh, hoping he can get up to like the 70-point range, that'd be great. Uh, Seth Jones, 58 points that's exactly what we got him for his lowest point total since 2019 but but 58 is an incredible number for a defenseman obviously plus 25 that's what we're paying you 8.5 million for seth jones at a boy uh evgeny gino malkin i can't believe we missed the playoffs the main reason i got gino was for his playoff experience and we lost out one point so if evgeny malkin retires that sucks uh, okay, Alex Nylander down to an 84, and he only had 51 points on the year. His lowest point total since ever coming into the NHL. First time he hasn't cracked over 10 goals, so that's concerning. Uh, Taylor Radish, 23 goals, 49 points on the year. That is a career high. That's awesome. So he's just improving every single year. Good to see. The best second round pick I ever paid. Brady Kachuk, 43 points. That's that's his second highest career point total. Obviously, last year had 48. But again, another 25 goal year. That's fantastic. Uh, Thomas Shabbat with 41. That's great to see from our captain, Hot Sam Bacho. That's a career high. You love to see it. Uh, Nick Suzuki with 36 points. So can someone go back and calculate? how many points he had on our team compared to Vegas. Obviously, he played one extra game, 83. Logan Brown with 35. Jacob St. Bernard Docker with 16 goals and 16 helpers for 32 points. What a rookie campaign. I'm hoping he jumps up to like 82 or 83. That'd be awesome. Nick Ritchie with 23. That's awesome. Andreas Janssen. Lucas Hirsch with 19. He's still an 81. Brett Ritchie with 18, 12 tucks. Uh, Johnny Tyconic, 16 points. He's an 82. That's good to see. The Shoe, 79 overall, 16 points on the year. Glenn Sumal, the dog, up to an 81. He only played 50 games this year, so we lost out on 32, but still a pretty decent campaign for Glenn Sumal. He played 25 in the AHL, had 10 points, so he had 19 points this year combined. And now looking at the tendies, was it our goaltending? I don't know what it was. I don't really know what to blame this on. Probably our goal scoring, actually. Matt Murray played 60 games, 35 wins. You can't hate on that. Philip Gustafson, so Philip Gustafson had five wins, four of them were shutouts. Guys, a freak. That's so weird. That's such a weird stat line. Here are the goaltenders. Obviously, Vasilevsky, Alex Nijelkovic, Ben Bishop, all these guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We know them all. Anyone who I don't usually see, like Michael Hutchinson. Okay, there you go. 35 wins. boy. Let's have a look at rookie skaters. Um, oh, sorry. Actually, we're in the playoffs, so I can't do this. Damn, that sucks. So it's, it only shows rookies that are in the playoffs. It doesn't show the entire year. That's super, super annoying. We'll go ahead and have a look at the entire skaters. Taylor Hall, Tyler Sagan with 62. That 2010 draft class, Tyler and Taylor, killing it. Nathan McKinnon, the draft class of 2013. Three years later, he has 102 points. Miko Rantanen, one of the best players in the NHL today. He has 99. Mark Shifley with 99. Almost hit 100. That sucks. Uh, Robbie Fabry's killing it over there for St. Louis. That's good to see. Nico Heischer, Tolvanen, again, this guy's a freak. He continues to produce non-stop we got Frederick bang there he is 87 points who are you no now I know a lot of you Montreal fans are gonna want to know how Kokaniemi did since coming into the NHL after he was scratched and he put up 10 points in 21 games and he's down to a 77 so he's not happy over there in Montreal so that sucks I'm still not over that that is the worst uh, so how'd my playoff prediction do? Florida got swept. All right. See you later, Florida. Vancouver made it to round two. They lost against McDavid. And then Nashville and Washington. And Washington took care of them pretty easy. Four to nothing. This Byron Cole guy is just having like the silver spoon just fed to him. He gets drafted to a sick team. 20 years old. Gets put on the first line with the Capitals. Plays with Kuznetsov and, and Ovechkin. Has a fantastic rookie year. Ends up winning the cup in year number one. This freaking guy, Byron Cole. Must be nice, buddy. Uh, McDavid, Tolvanen. So even though Edmonton only made it to the third round, McDavid led the way, of course. 
Here's how Jack Hughes is doing, 89 overall. So Buffalo just, Buffalo's got a bunch of riches over there. So let's see the draft class. Uh, I was actually, before we see the draft class, let's see where we're drafting, just for fun. Maybe we'll win the draft lottery. Uh, obviously not. So a lot of traded picks, actually. So Chicago, San Jose. Ooh, so Pittsburgh has a terrible year, and then they end up, uh, they end up picking number two, but they traded the pick to San Jose. That's brutal. Uh, so Vegas, Montreal, Toronto. Anaheim so where are we we actually draft 15th so it's good to know we got a top 15 pick let's view the draft class let's see let's see if my upgraded scouting actually worked okay there you go that's beautiful you're seeing a lot of information here that's awesome except for Germany apparently we didn't go to Germany at all that's my bad so that the top pick, Jarvanen, he's that offensive defenseman from Finland. He has a similar style to P.K. Subban. So that's kind of cool. We can see another P.K. in the NHL, 17 years old, offensive defenseman out of Finland. And then we got Adrian Manderville, who is the center stud that we need on our team. But of course, we tanked one year too late, but it's all good. I'm happy with our squad, but yeah, he would have been definitely nice to get. Um, looks like he's going to go to San Jose. Oh my God. We got Pablo here, potentially going number three, similar style to Jeff Carter. What a beast. Uh, Maurice Dag. Could get another Dag out of the queue. Last time that happened, we all know how that went down. Ilya Habibulin, the most Russian name of all time. He's a pure sniper, though. He's got a similar style to Mike Gartner. He's got goal scoring, pro release, and a hard wrist shot. Weakness? None. Ooh, I would love a guy like Ilya Habibulin. That would be sick. Uh, honestly, oh man, I hope this guy goes to Boston. Byron Bruin, he has to go to Boston. Please make that happen. So if we're picking top 15, looks like we're going to be picking in this kind of area. So we got, again, not a lot of information, but um, anyone with... Anyone kind of in this area. So we got a couple of defensemen. We got Hector Scarabelli. What a name. He's a grinder though, but he actually put up a lot of points for a grinder. Six foot two, 79 points in 65 games. Okay, interesting. Uh, we got uh, Coheen Monroe here. Again, another two-way forward. Uh, this guy could be medium elite. We got Martin Dingle. What a name. He's an enforcer defenseman. So 6'4", 209. Some more style to Big Z. Ooh, that could be a fun pick. Uh, we got Leo Mueller here. So he is a power forward, 6'4", 206. Very friendly, keeps to himself. So here's just kind of some uh, potential players we could probably pick. Uh, Jacques Denis, there he is, out of the queue. Could be medium elite, two bars, similar style Joe Thornton. So just again, a few players here just to kind of gauge uh, some sort of idea. If you guys can let me know what you think we should do in the draft. Any good goalies out here? Any tendies? The best goalie is 53rd, and he's, ooh, okay, so these guys could be franchise. I've seen a lot of people get a lot of franchise goalies, so these guys could be franchise because they are gems. Now, wait, we have two first-round picks this year, correct? I'm pretty sure we do. Now, did Evgeny Malkin retire? And he didn't. Okay, so Gino's back for another year, which is good. Is he even signed? I don't remember. But Joe Thornton, Patrick Marlowe, Henrik Zetterberg, Parise, Koivu, Stastny, all these guys are out of the NHL. No one from our team, obviously, I don't think so. Obviously, Gino's staying for one more year, so no one retired. That's good news. Obviously, no goalies would call it quits. There you go. So in this draft, we have the 15th, the 29th. We have, obviously, a 7th round, a 2nd rounder. We also have a 6th, a 3rd, a 5th, and a 4th. So I don't, know, I don't know why it's not, like, in order, but a 2nd, a 3rd, a 4th, a 5th, a 6th, and two firsts. So that's good to know. So here's what our scout thinks we should do with the Buffalo pick. Zane Stillman, who is a grinder, so they want us to go after a big guy. He's 6'5", 219. We don't really have that big grinder type player yet. I mean, aside from the Ritchie brothers, we don't really have a young up and coming tough guy, which wouldn't be bad. To, I don't know if he's a first rounder, but again, it's still something to look at. Uh, Nicholas Olmark there, and then Luke Booth, who is a two way forward out of the queue, who is similar style to Kuznetsov. So that's what they think we should do with our 29th pick. Now, what about the 15th? They got us taking a two way forward, a left winger out of Sweden, I think that's Sweden, yeah, in the SHL. So three points in 39 games, so again, another winger. Or Liam Sontag, who's that defenseman, I'm pretty sure. No, he's the, he's the big power forward. Right, he's 18 years old, so again, just some food for thought. And then Leo Mueller as well, another power forward. So you guys can let me know what you think we should do with this pick. Um, we also want to have a look at our forward depth, so it's down to an E. Ooh, it was a D before. 
It's not good. Uh, defensive depth, a B minus. You love to see it. Goalie, A plus. Perfect. That's awesome because we got a stud elite goalie in the works here. Caleb Burrows, a fourth round pick. Not a bad selection. Thanks very much. Not a big deal. Matt Murray is still going to be elite for at least five more years, which is awesome. And we have him locked up for the next two at 12.3. And then Philip Gustafson is just a pretty good backup. So thanks for watching. I will see you guys in the next episode when we head into to the draft should be a fun one next year we need to win every single game every single game you lose the year is just a joke i do not want to come into the situation where we lose out of the playoffs by one point that is just a dagger in the heart of the ottawa senators fans no one's even eating their doritos at the last game there was doritos full bags left everywhere the fans were upset i'm upset and i'll see you guys at the nhl entry draft